This is a video that I've actually been wanting to make for a month. Um, I wanted to discuss our current transportation system and how things are, in my viewpoint, going to have to seriously change over the next decade, two decades, preferably in my view even less. Um, so let's take a look first at our current traffic situation, which can be depicted, unfortunately, by this image. 6 o'clock p.m. I'm sure that those of you who drive on your daily commute, very familiar scene, traffic all over the place, backed up, miles and miles, pollution pouring into the air from all the motors, with the exception, of course, of the hybrids that shut the motor off at the stoplights. And then, of course, you have the dynamic of driving as a whole. You've got people that are texting on their phones while they're driving. They're, they're uh, uh, you know, reading Twitter, Facebook, doing things that they should not be doing behind the wheel. And the car companies are trying to address this by plugging these um, apps into the dashboard so you wouldn't have to worry about the phone. But it's still a distraction, and in fact, Consumer Reports says that for the most part, this doesn't work. Um, and I would have to agree, because let's think about it this way. You're not eliminating the distraction. You're just moving the distraction from one medium, that is your smartphone, into the car's stereo system. You're still listening to tweets and not paying full attention to what's on the road in front of you. Okay, so human error, and if you ask me, human error is the number one cause of accidents, not just for drivers, but also with pedestrians, people, because I did um, a video a couple months back on um, on crossing the, uh, the, um, crossing the street as somebody who is partially sighted or blind, and I had made a note in that video about how a lot of people don't even wait for traffic. They just go if they see a little white man, not even considering the fact that somebody could be plowing in, maybe talking on their cell phone while driving, not having seen the guy in the intersection. Bam! And that's how things like that end up on the news. Um, it's just a, it's a really, really sorry state. And of course, in the big cities, you've got ways to combat this by taking the public bus. Or in the case of myself and other people who have special needs, they can take the paratransit bus, which is a form of public transportation. It's just door-to-door, -door, eliminating the need to walk long distances. Now, these two forms of transit may help to reduce the amount of cars on the road, but it still has the problem of polluting because, unfortunately, vehicles of a certain size and weight, especially these really big buses, I don't know about the little ones, but the really big ones are not subject to the same laws for pollution governance because in order to, from what I, my guess, I could be completely wrong about this. I'm just throwing my two cents into the ring from what, from what my guess would be. In order for these motors to be as torquey as they need to be to pull all that weight, you can't have something that's completely zero emissions, or at least you, you couldn't do it easily. Um, it would be a major infrastructure reworking, and there are cities that are doing that, other cities not so much. It all depends on the public transit budget. But as a whole, as a whole, if you ask me, it doesn't necessarily address the pollution in the way that needs to be addressed, which is to say, rather than reducing it slowly and little bit by little bit, it just needs to be gone all at once. So how could we do this? Well, if you live in um, certain cities with an underground rail network, you could take the public train, 
and assuming that this train runs on a, renew on a renewable energy source, the vehicle itself may be electrically driven, and that in itself is environmentally friendly, but the, per but the source producing the electricity has to be environmentally friendly too. And I'm not sure, I can't speak to any particular city as to how well that's working out, but the idea here is if we had a system um, of, say, a mass rail transit that were, that operated on a solar power grid or a wind power grid or perhaps a hybrid of both depending on the weather conditions or geothermal energy something completely renewable completely independent of fossil fuels that's where we have something so the electric train is halfway there if we could get the grid itself to run on a renewable energy source we'd be completely there and in fact, science, I actually read something recently that suggests that um, scientific research has said that if you commute via train or bus, then you're a lot happier when you get to work. Reason? You don't have to worry about driving. You could even be more productive. As an example, let's say you have to give a great big presentation in the boardroom that day and you're thinking about the presentation, perhaps you're not concentrating on your driving, you know, you got your mind on, okay, how am I going to address this question or that question? Well, if you take the train or the public bus, if you have a long enough commute to where you could effectively do this, you could, when you hop on the train, just hop, just pull out your tablet, pull out your um, computer, your phone, run through the presentation, Maybe run through it with your seatmates, see what they think, if they have any experience in your field of work. But, oh, and, 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 um, and I just want to throw this in. Back when I was in school, legally speaking, I cannot drive, okay? So, there were some days, most of the days I would ride the public school bus, the, um, the uh, special needs school bus. But on days where I had a major test, I would be driven in by my parents, and we would use that time to study. It's the exact same thing here. As basically, um, if you're riding public transit, then you don't have to worry about the driving yourself. You can sit back and relax after a long day at the office or prepare for a day at the office. It's just a lot less stressful to take public transit. And if public transit were 100% um, 100 renewable in the sense that the train and the uh, grid were renewable energy, see where I'm going? Another example of this is the overland rail system. I know Denver has one because I've driven through Denver a couple times on the way up to my summer house, and I've seen these trains on the streets, um, but there are some areas with overland rail. Um, there's a possibility my area might be putting it in, and I don't know that for a fact, but if they did, I would be incredibly happy. The way these systems work is they have their power generated to them from the overland um, telephone wires that are already in place versus having to construct a whole new underground system. But again, we have that little scenario where in order for the system to be totally environmentally friendly, the vehicles themselves don't just have to be zero pollution. The source from the electricity has to be zero pollution as well. Other ways to, uh, to get around? Walking and biking, really big. Um, you know, in big cities, it's especially with the rail system, obviously walking would be part of your commute. But biking helps to get some exercise. Personally, I don't see that working for me, not because I don't enjoy biking, but because of my peripheral vision not being all that great. I could see a situation where perhaps I think it's clear, and all of a sudden a Toyota Prius turns in on me. I didn't hear him. I end up getting slapped in the face. So... But I say for the general populace, definitely a good way to look at it. Now, perhaps you're thought like, well, I want to go somewhere, but taking the train or the bus would take too long. Biking would take too long. Walking would take too long. By the time I got to my destination, I would be 
completely exhausted, not able to enjoy the show, or not able to enjoy a good meal, because I'd be too busy thinking about the torture that my legs just went through to get me there, which I'm sure a lot of people who don't walk all that much are probably thinking. So, to that, I suggest personal mobility pods. And I actually watched a video that suggests that this system is very possible today. But instead of using guideways that these systems here in this picture do, these Ultra PRT systems, and there's also a similar system in Mazdar City, they use predetermined tire tracks, if you will, on concrete guideways. This gentleman in the other video was suggesting instead of doing that, we take the lanes of our current road network and lay them with rails. And these little pods would run on rails. And instead of... Think, think about it like this. Let's say that that did come to pass. Okay? You would still have the ability to go where you want, when you want, without having to worry about timetables. But at the same time, no ownership costs, no upkeep, no insurance, um, no maintenance. You could just... Get onto your smartphone, go to an app, and say, I want a pod to come get me and take me to the, you know, to Best Buy. And when you get out, it will leave and go find another, another um, patron to draw, to, uh, to uh, cart around. And if this system were completely run on renewable energy, it would be just incredible. But let's think about it like this. If one day you woke up and you found out that your car was gone and replaced instead by an app on your smartphone that allowed you to summon one of these, how would you feel about that? Again, you would still have the ability to come and go as you please when you want to but in a much more environmentally friendly um, and cost-effective way because no sound pollution, no smog, very quick because they're on rails. You don't have to worry about traffic. These would be guided rails um, that are dedicated. Perhaps you would have switch tracks every now and then, but the, but the, but the vehicle would communicate with every single other vehicle on that network and as a result, know where everything is at all times. Collisions would become a thing of the past. And in terms of my needs as a person who is blind or anybody else who has an exceptionality that prevents them from driving, think of it this way. Nobody to depend on. No paratransit evaluations to take. No, no greedy you know, bus drivers who don't know how to deal with somebody with a disability. You know... Just think about it for a moment. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Thank you for watching. Comments are welcome and have a nice day.